For more on this story, our guest is Jonathan Metzl, professor of sociology and psychiatry, as well as the director for, of the Center for Medicine, Health and Society at Vanderbilt University in Nashville, Tennessee. Thank you so much for joining us here on France 24. Uh, Trump has uh, chosen to focus, as we saw in Thanks that report, so on mental health uh, in the debate around guns. Are mass shooters mentally ill? Well, let me say, first of all, I trained as a psychiatrist and a sociologist. And so on one hand, I can completely understand why people turn to questions of mental illness after mass shootings. Uh, on one hand, what happens is so outside the bounds of civilized society that it makes sense for us to say that this is happening from somebody else, something, somebody outside of our society. And also, many mass shooters have psychiatric history. So certainly, I, I wouldn't say that that part isn't true. The problem is that Trump and the NRA and other politicians like that have been focusing on this mental illness narrative, not because they want to improve mental health care systems, or really because it, 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 it's a very ineffective way of, of, um, of stopping gun crime in a particular way, because even though mental illness might be a particular factor, there are many other factors that are probably more important that play out in mass shootings. Things like access to firearms, local firearm laws, particular histories of abuse, uh, particular histories of, of, of partner violence. And so just isolating this to the question of mental illness is in a way saying we're just going to focus on this one thing, but it's not it's really not effective. And the other fact is it reinforces stigmatizations of people with mental illness as being ticking time bombs. When you look at the numbers across the board in the United States, people with mental illness are far more likely to be the victims of violence, not the perpetrators of violence. And so in general, I feel like this is kind of a coded way of, of not doing anything. Now, uh, one thing mass shooters do have in common is the fact that they're often male uh, and they're white. Uh, from a uh, psychological perspective, what other patterns can we observe? You talked about violence, uh, partner of domestic violence. Uh, what, what other issues uh, can prompt someone uh, to become a mass shooter? Well, I think it's important and not trying to complicate the question at all and, and or take anything away from the pain after the shooting or the national reckoning that I think we're having now in the United States. But it's important to remember that the definition of a mass shooting is four or more strangers killed at a time of a shooting. And we have literally a, almost a mass shooting a day in the United States now. It's just that many of those mass shootings don't don't make it to the nightly news because they are uh, the victims are people of color in the United States. And so in that regard, Regard, I think, first of all, we have to ask ourselves, what kind of mass shooting are we talking about? It's this very spectacular kinds of mass shooting that we see uh, very often in these particular crimes, the assailants are white. And I think this Florida case is a, is a particular example. Some, someone with a troubled history, uh, someone with a history of gender or racial stereotypes or problems. Um, and the other main issue is easy access to firearms. It seems like that's a very common denominator and one that I think we really are, are needing, needing very much to look at. What, what draws, I mean, this might sound obvious, but uh, what draws these people to own a, a firearm? Is, is it the, the impression of, of power? Is it the idea that they, can, they have the power to take somebody else's life? What is it that draws these people to this kind of gun culture? Well, again, there's, uh, really that's the million-dollar question right now is, do these mass shootings, do they represent um, um, outside of our society, or do they represent exaggerations of, of our society in a particular way? And so in that sense, I mean, mass shootings are, are statistically very hard to, part to predict. And I would say that, I mean, in this case, the mass shooter lived, so maybe we can ask that person. But very often, they're acts of mass suicide, and so we don't know. I know that a lot of times weapons themselves are are marketed in the United States as symbols of kind of male power, restored white male power. So there's this symbolic value. People who feel like they've been humiliated or discredited. There's an assumption that guns will get them, allow them to restore that sense of manhood. That's that's really across the board. And the question is, are these mass shootings exaggerations of us, or, or, or are they, you know, outside of uh, outside of our boundaries? My last question for you is about manhood and, and about this this idea of being a man. It, at what point do the ideas of masculinity uh, or hypermasculinity and guns, at uh, what point does that in, do they intersect? 
Well, let me say that in relation to that and the mass shootings, it's important to keep in mind that there are many, many, many people in this country who meet all of these criteria, people who maybe have had psychiatric histories, have had aggrieved masculinity, white men, who are also responsible gun owners. And so in a way, the question is, is there something predictive? Could we have seen this coming by knowing these factors? And unfortunately, the, the answer is no to that. There are just way too many guns in our society. And so the question of picking out which of these particular shooters is going to go on to, which one of these people is going to go on, is, is in a way not really, it's not really predictable by psychiatrists or by law, law enforcement. And so this question of masculinity is a question of our society. It's not a question of can we stop mass shootings in that regard. It's really a question of do we have a problem with the roles that guns play in our society? Have we constructed these guns as symbols of white masculinity, restored greatness, factors like that. Do we re really not need to rethink not just what, how can we stop a mass shooting, which is important, but also what guns mean in our society? And I think the answer is yes. Thank you so much for joining us. Jonathan Metzl, professor of sociology and psychiatry at uh, Vanderbilt University in Tennessee. Thank you so much. Taking another